Yeah. Morning. I'd like to welcome you to the Atlanta Street Church of Christ uh, morning Bible class. Uh, thank you for joining in with us this morning. And uh, we're going to get into our lesson. So we'll uh, have a prayer and we'll move forward uh, with our lesson this morning. Our text will be taken from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to uh, verse 30. And then we will uh, entitle this lesson uh, Feast in a Time of Famine. We have a word of prayer when we get started. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this day that you blessed us with. We pray, kind Father, that you will continue to uh, show us favor as we live this life. And uh, pray that you will continue to give us strength to do the things that will get us your favor, kind of Father. Uh, we are just so very thankful that uh, you want to help your children and be with your people. And pray that you continue to do so, Father. We ask that you forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. Pray that you continue to help us grow and humble ourselves into pursuing you to what you plan for us and what you want for our life. Bless the teacher. You have a revelation of things you study. It may be a blessing to others. We ask this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Our text comes from Matthew 11, verses 20 to 30. And I'll read it to you, a familiar text. And it reads, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you should find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, in the text, Jesus is offering uh, his audience something. He, uh, he suggests and he uh, offers them to come to him so that they will be accepted of him. Uh, he, he understands that they uh, have many burdens and are weary and tired and he wants to give them something called rest. He tells them to take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And for I am meek and lowly in heart, I want to help you. I want to relieve you of this uh, heavy burden and the many uh, struggles that you have. And you should find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, it's, 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 it's easy, uh, it's light, and it's acceptable to you. And uh, my burden is light, it's not heavy. I want you to uh, be relieved. I want to help you. And when you just put that in layman's term, you know what Jesus is really saying? I want to give you favor. I want you to have favor with me. I want you to experience uh, easy and light. I want you to experience good. I want you to be accepted with me. I want to bless you. Favor means goodwill, acceptance, and benefits flowing from these. Finding favor means that you gain approval, uh, you get special benefits, and you get blessings. But before we really get off into favor, we have to establish one foundational truth, that God's favor, which is some month and favor is a word that is synonymous with grace. Uh, it's synonymous with kindness. And it's synonymous with compassion. But God's grace, his favor, his kindness, and his compassion is what God gives to us at his good pleasure. If you look at Ephesians 1, verses 5 through 12, you'll find out that what God gave the Ephesians when it came to salvation, when it came to uh, changing them from aliens to being uh, uh, citizens in the kingdom of God. He did it of his own good pleasure. For in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5, uh, he says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And if you drop down, I think about uh, verse number 9, he says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in itself. In other words, you can't earn grace. You can't earn kindness of God. You can't get it through works. It's his good pleasure to give it to us. And what Jesus is saying to the people back in Matthew chapter 11 is that it's his good pleasure. He wants to show you this good pleasure of blessing and of giving you the things that he offers in Matthew chapter 11. Uh, when you're looking at 
God's favor. Uh, again, it is not of your own will or my will that receive it. It's established by its good treasure. But you can help yourself with God's favor by uh, living a good life, by living a godly life, by being obedient to his word, by being obedient to his commands, doing the things that he say do. You can help yourself to, to uh, once you get in God's favor, to stay in God's favor by praying and prayers and having prayers answered and receiving the things that you ask for in prayer are a part of the benefits of being accepted with the Lord, are part of the uh, special things you get from him when you take his yoke on you and when you come unto him. Uh, in Genesis chapter 30, and verse 27, we're going to see um, an illustration of what it means to have faith and under give us a little better understanding of uh, what it is to have God's faith upon you. And, 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 and feast in the time of famine is just a metaphor. And, and think about what it says. You're going to feast in the time of famine. Feast in a time of famine simply means it's a uh, it's a uh, figure of speech, uh, and it means that while things is not necessarily going good for everyone else or uh, in and around and about you, when a famine from a famine standpoint, you're going to feast. It's not a literal saying, but it's a figure of speech that means God's favor is upon that person. God's favor. It's with that person. God's grace and God's mercy is with that person. Genesis chapter 30. And the verses were B27. Listen to what Laban said. And Laban said unto him, he's talking to Jacob, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry for or stay with me for a while, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. So, so, so Laban could understand that his blessings were associated with Jacob being with him. And he found favor in the Lord's sight because Jacob had God's favor on him even though Jacob was on the run from his brother Esau. And Jacob had done some things that necessarily wasn't the uh, right things or the best things. But he still found favor he still found acceptance, he still found benefits, he still found goodwill and special things from God, uh, even though he had done some things that he uh, had necessarily, shouldn't necessarily have done. So that tells me that God's favor is about his good pleasure to give it to whom he will. Alright, alright. So Laban understands that he's being blessed, he's finding favor because of Jacob. Right. And then we look at uh, Genesis uh, 39 and 21. This is Joseph. And Joseph is finding favor in God's sight. And prosperity is associated with God's favor. We saw it. Laban says, I'm being blessed. My crops is cheap and everything was multiplying and getting more. But because Jacob was there with him, all right? And now we're gonna find and see that it's not exclusively just about prosperity. It's all about God being with you when you see Joseph in prison. But yet, God still blessed his hand. Let's read 39 and 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed mercy and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Joseph in prison. He don't have a lot. He's not prospering a whole bunch of this and that. He's not rich. He's in prison. But he still finds God's favor because God gives his favor to whom he will. It's his good pleasure to give the favor to who he wants to. All right. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was to do it of it. The keeper of the prison was not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. 
I, Joseph himself wasn't prosperous, but the prison and the prisoner was most prospering because the Lord was with him. Joseph. There's a lesson there that having God with you is very important to being in his favor. Now, if you don't have God with you, how can you be in his favor? How can you be blessed? And if you don't necessarily understand that, and that's, that, I need a little proof of that. Turn over to Exodus 33, 12, uh -huh. and, uh, 13. Good morning. Now, in this text, in Exodus 33, uh, 12 and 13, Moses is basically saying that God don't leave us. And God is upset with Israel. He's going to leave. He's not going to stay with us. He said, I'm going I'm to I'm, 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 I'm let my angel take y'all on the rest of it because I'm going to mess around and leave people. You know, I, I just, I'm going to leave y'all. But God, when Moses prays, or he petitions God, and prayer does help, when you have uh, favor with God, and it would help you get favor with God. And let's read what happens with Moses. 33, 12, 13. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou says unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou said, I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace. Remember, grace and mercy and kindness and compassion are synonymous with favor in thy sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now the way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider this nation thy people. And he says, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry it up, not with it. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Uh, it is not in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated. I and thy people from I and thy people from all the people that are on the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight and in my name. Now Moses wanted the Lord to go with him. And the Lord was basically saying, I wasn't gonna go with him. But because he prayed to the Lord, he petitioned to the Lord that if you don't go with us, the people will say that you are not, uh, uh, we haven't found grace in our sight. And, and knowing that, one of the ways that you can know that you found favor with God is that he go with you, that you're in his presence and he is in your presence. And when you go back to Matthew 11, when Jesus says, come unto me, he's offering you to come in. He's offering me to come into God's presence, where the favor and where the blessings and where the special gifts are. Okay? Alright. Uh, even sinners, when they humble themselves, can find faith with God. Look at 2 Chronicles 33 and 12. And what I'm trying to do is lay the foundation of an understanding of favor and what it means to be uh, blessed by God, and what it means to have God in the presence, and that it is not um, your will or man's will, but it's God's good pleasure to give us his favor. It is God's good pleasure, pleasure to give us his blessing. To give us special benefits. In 2 Chronicles 33, in the verses 12, we had the wicked king Manasseh. A king that didn't do what God said. He put all to he took idols and put them in the temple where God was supposed to be. Manasseh did a lot of things that wasn't right. If you read 2 Chronicles chapter 33, it'll tell you. But God has let him get punished. And, and, and he got fish hook in his nose. He's being, being treated badly by enemies who besieged the city. And they get ready to drag him out. And then he does something. Let me see here. Uh, we'll start at verse 12. 
And when he was in his affliction, that's Manasseh, he besought the Lord his God. Watch this now. And humbled himself greatly before the God of his father. Then he prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him, that is God, and God heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into the kingdom that Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. After everything he did, when he humbled himself, he repented. After everything he did, when he uh, prayed to God and besought God, you know what God did? Showed him faith. Showed him blessing. Showed him mercy. That's the type of God we serve. And when we get back to Matthew chapter 11, what Jesus is saying to the people in that day and that age is that I'm offering you this. I'm offering you favor. He said to them, he said to you and I, 